come from the main screen hangar uh, here at the Gnome School of Visual Effects talking about some of the, um, the things that you incorporate when analyzing the human figure. Yep. We've been talking off camera about this construct. A lot of people are asking you about time and yes. how long something takes. So it's a common thread uh, that we're starting to see more and more of. Let's talk a little bit about that yep. and how people should really be sort of maybe framing the, the construction in their mind of time being maybe irrelevant in some ways when they're learning. How do you feel about that as a... Uh, I think uh, as an argument I, I've seen game. it as well. Like every, I've been watching some of the summits, and and you see you see professionals like people who do this day in and day out, and at the top level, uh, and naturally they're going to be fast, right? And so, the, the the natural question when you're still learning is, well, this takes me a long time. How fast can he do it? Right. And then that's the that that. Erroneously, I believe, like that's the the, the the time gap is like their metric of of quality or or you know, and it might be like the, the barometer. The, the barometer. The, the the question might be related to this this idea of working in the industry, right? So I need to be able to produce. You know, it might be driven a little bit by like, by that. Like, okay, if I'm in a game studio and I'm working on a character, how long do I have to do it, or how long does it take right. you? Um, so there's. It's, in that way, it's a, it's a practical concern, but I think if it's framed in, in the idea of progressing as an artist, just like we, we said, the wrong question, because right. um, you can't put a timer on it, right? It's something that evolves at its own pace, and, and the fact is, like, you could be working, like, super slow and methodically and get to an amazing result, or you could just be really slow, and then, after the investment of two years, have an epiphany. Of course. And then you're... Uh, you've just broken through a plateau and you're at the next level. Right. And, you know, and it, that's, development goes like that. I mean, it's not, it's not a linear thing at all. I mean, it's like toil, 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 and, right. and a breakthrough. I mean, it's, it's the classic thing of, you know, Thomas Edison, right? That's right. Or, you know, There's a lot of pain associated yeah, with what I mean, you're seeing at the end of the day. a bit of inspiration and a lot of perspiration. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's the natural thing. You get faster and more accurate with experience. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's it, and, th and that's it. I mean, that, so th th the question is, how do you develop that experience? And, I mean, there's there work, I guess, is the answer. You yeah, know, a myriad like study. of ways yeah, to approach I mean, it. It's, it's, yeah. But in constructing, a, sort of let's construct a fund of knowledge for people to take from mm -hmm. to say that if they're, if they're thinking about, there's two different ways to approach this, if, in my opinion. If you're learning for the sake of your own sort of um, development in your own free time, that is a very different construct than meeting the requirements of a job. Yes. So the speed with which you're completing something within a production environment, I stress the word production environment because yep. I know there's a lot of people behind the camera imagining themselves working in a production environment. Yep. That's very different than the time that we would spend, let's say, sitting at our coffee tables in the morning, having our, our breakfast time uh, sort of sketch. Yep. That, those are two different things. I could take a month to yield a drawing that's this big, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that there's something that that those two things are overlapping in some ways when I hear the question being posed when it comes to time. And it, for me, is the sort of thing that I'd like to give people a very solid foundation to say, don't have to think about it that way anymore. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to what I was saying about sketchbooks in my exactly. presentation, right? That's your time to, it's your time to fail, your time to experiment right. and, and maybe fail, maybe succeed. But it's your, also your time to take your time, right? To, and risks. And, and yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's, in my experience, like the stuff that I, it, the, the, the things that I execute, have executed in a production environment mm -hmm. are things that I learned in that precious space of, of self-study under your own timelines. Um, when you're in production, you don't really learn things you're going to do. You're doing the stuff that you already know Busy how to do. Doing, yeah. You're, you're, you're doing to do the stuff what you were able to do yeah, already. That's right. Yeah. They hired you to do the thing that you do. And so you're doing the that, point. and you're not you're not risking, you're not exploring. That's the, people not going to pay you to, to risk generally, you know. Yeah, especially not in today's if you climate. Have, if you have a delivery, right. you're going to deliver what what it is. And so, so it's important to to develop yourself on the side artistically, because that's that's the only place where you're going to pursue your own interests 100%. Um, and you know it. it that eventually will feed back into production, right? You show up with this new capability mm -hmm. that you've honed on the side, um, be like, oh, I can, I can sculpt a horse for you. you Absolutely. Know? 
and and I that's this happened for me. You know, it happened to me. I've you know? seen that horse actually. Yeah. So I mean, it was you know centaur. I had a nice centaur study that I did off my own back, just an interest, like an interest in, you know, okay, well I know a little bit about a human human anatomy. How how is this analogous to quadrupeds or vertebrates or, or whatever? And so I started investigating. I did a nice piece and and ended up doing all the horses for War Horse, you know? And Pretty smooth. Yeah, right? I mean, but only because, speaking. yeah, it was just like, I know, you know, like, it's off the back of that that mm -hmm. I knew a little bit about what I was doing, and, and, it's, and it's an important thing. Like, I think the important thing also is to pr pursue your own interest. You know, don't do, in your own time, in your own study time, don't do the the thing that you think you should be doing, do the thing Absolutely. that you want to do, the Absolutely. thing that inspires you, because that's, you know, if it's the, cra whatever crazy thing is in your imagination, you know, put the building blocks in, in place to realize that, and then that, there's, there's, there's like a, a force multiplier to your own enthusiasm, right? Absolutely. Like, if it's tedious and it's dragging you down trying to execute this thing, then, then you need to, you need to find something that you know, has your full attention and, and momentum and, and impetus behind it, and then you'll travel twice as fast. It's a very reflective approach. It's also something I like to stress to say that you should probably consider reflecting on why that's causing you some strife, and if it's something that's not as interesting, you, you feel you're going against the grain. Well, I can, I can see, I mean, a lot yeah. of it is, is I, I, we were all, like, learning once. Like, we're, this industry, like, when I'm speaking about industry, of visual effects, games, right. like, there's, there's a big requirement to break into the industry, and you, People put in lots and lots now of more than ever. lots. It's hard. It's it's yeah. a crowded space, and you put in lots and lots of effort in your own time. Maybe you're working another job. You're you're working at your machine from mm -hmm. you know 6 p.m. 8 p.m. when you get home till yeah. early morning. You know, like or get uh, up earlier, 4 a.m. till sort of. If you're a morning person, yeah, that if, was never me. But if you but can manage it. <laughs> you put in a lot of effort, and and that's kind of the requirement. But but it needs to be effort well spent, and and I think you know the enthusiasm that you're bringing to your own personal projects will pay off. Sort of keeping know? with that theme of the freedom to fail in a contextualized sort of way, I think that that was a really valid point that you made. You were talking about the, giving yourself the freedom and the space to fail, which is yeah. something that, you know, I don't hear that a lot from a lot of educators. It's sort of like we're trying to get through the curriculum, we're trying to get through the, the material. Well, it's extremely valuable. Uh, I'd like to come back to that. You hear it. I mean, so there's, there's this cliche in Silicon Valley, which is, Associated, but not at all. I think the whole thing is was. becoming kind of cliche. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the whole thing is like, oh, fail fast, whatever. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I started a company and it yeah. failed. I was like, twelve. You know, <laughs> uh, but but in the context of, of learning, like you know, you're studying education, and and it's it's is those those missteps that guide you in you know it's it's a, it's never a, it's never a linear path, right? And it's is always misstep and correct and you know you whine you, your your site is over there but you know you have to you have to correct your your route you know yeah. because it's not and and maybe there maybe it's the case that you know like you like when we say failure it's an exploration Absolutely. right we consider it an exploration you're going to learn something on that exploration yeah, derivative even if, of some even if the result isn't what you you set out to achieve you'd be like oh that looks terrible but i use these tools in a new right. way and you know what? Next project, two projects away. Like mm, in my mind, like you have experience. Like that process is experience level going up. You know, even though that you don't have anything to show in your portfolio, right? You know, you have. You're 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 fractionally better. From one know? illustrator to another, it makes me think that it's like living life on the edge of the pen. You know, you have no idea what could happen when that thing could start to that, spill ink, and you have to make do with true. what's happening. I mean, that's yeah. true. I mean, yeah. it's. Um, but Sharper the, by the minute. <laughs> but that's the, uh, it's, that's the magic of making art, you know, is, yeah. is, is, I guess, experimenting and seeing what I happens. relish those opportunities. You know, I was flying yeah. from Lisbon back to Los Angeles, a very long flight, yeah. uh, 20 plus hours, yeah. and I thought, oh, this pen is going berserk and there's turbulence, but I'm yeah, going to work with it. I, I, I tell you what, I, I get so much drawing done yeah. on airplanes. You know, what it is, the I guess, I know, <laughs> you know, I'm being totally candid. Like, I, I've even, I, I, I'm, my most creative, yeah. I mean, not, Me too. <laughs> not, you know, and like, just, just, it's like, you know, Thin just thing, air, pages and pages, it might yeah. be lack of oxygen, yeah. but, Bad um, coffee as well. so <laughs> much so that I, I, uh, whenever I need to make an idea, like my next time that I'm like, have a block, I'm going to be like, I'm just going to book a round trip ticket yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and I'm not going to stay, I'm just going to fly 
like eight hours to somewhere and get a coffee in the airport. Yeah. Maybe stay overnight and fly back. It's stay like a web stay, episode waiting to happen stay, here. Stay at the airport hotel, check in, fly straight back, and get another eight <laughs> hours of drawing done. Can you see it now? Surrogate people with Scott Eaton and Louis Tucci around yeah. the world in less than a day. Yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna stay on the airplane. <laughs> That's the thing. They bring me a cup of coffee. I start thinking arts and crafts. I'm spilling coffee on the thing, and the lady next to me really, is looking at me. Really, that sounds good, man. I'd like to see that. <laughs> the lady next to me is going, are you an artist? What are you doing? <laughs> what do you intend good, to do man. with that drawing, I mean, sir? Coffee is <laughs> coffee is uh, an inspirational medium. Yeah, I'm like, you know? Drinking it, spilling yeah, it. Can I get some cranberry juice yeah. for the blood here? Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see that Funny thing about cranberry juice in the plane. It does not stain the paper the same way that you would imagine. I, I'll try that on the I, way back. I just tried that, and I thought, where's all the red? There's no red. Really? It's, it's mostly liquid, up. right? Yeah, it just dried up. It's basically sucrose or whatever. Just <laughs> so another sort of lesson to be learned. Don't drink that stuff. <laughs> it may not be pure cranberry juice. Yeah, I, I, this is what I'm getting at. Yeah. But speaking of ideas happening on planes, uh, you have such a tremendous diversity as a creative. I don't even call you uh, right. sort of, that's what I'm going to call you as a creative. Well, that, um, thank you. Yeah, because um, I think that there's, you know, just recently having sat through a talk with Norman Seath, he was talking about this creative energy that's in all of us, this yeah. sort of feminine spirit that just is birthing these ideas, and you are a factory of birthing ideas. Uh, we're yep. going to try to get through this, but yep. Venus and Hercules lamp, the yep. Venus of Cupertino um, iPad holder, and then the Moi, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Moai, Moai. Moai, yeah, yep. the Venus of Cupertino, the Moai, and other product designs. Where do you start to facilitate that? Um, where do you start to to feed that kind of creative energy on those plane rides? Is that where this is happening? Again, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Like That's the awesome. Venus, the, you can go on my website, the Venus of Cupertino originated on a flight from London to Denmark. With a little to, pen, you know, the dollar store pen point, ball, Ballpoint pen in the sketchbook. I had a little, uh, this, this, the drawing is on my website. Under right. the drawing section, you go down and you can see it. And then there's a little follow-up showing the product design development. But it was... The funny story was that it was, uh, so I, I did it. I'm like, that's yeah, a cute little drawing. You know, I don't put a lot of drawings onto my, my website because, because of the rule, right? You don't have to show what you do in your sketchbook. Yeah, that's right. Um, but Unless I'm like, people that are demanding was, to see it. Yeah, well, even then I would just be like, sorry, it's the rule. You don't have to show it. Right. Um, but I'm like, that's really fun. So I put it on there and I had it titled Scott's iPad Docking Station. And... Uh, and I started, sometimes I'd check my Google Analytics, my yeah. traffic coming to my website. As any good and business person should. Yeah, it goes in cycles. Sometimes yeah. I'm like really enthused, and sometimes I'm like can't, can't be bothered. But uh, I started to notice traffic arriving at my website from people who had searched on Google, keyword iPad docking station. Interesting. And then landing on that post of that drawing of the Venus of Cupertino. And so I searched iPad docking station, and that post was number three in the world for like three weeks wow. a few years ago really behind something. like Amazon.com, yeah. iPad docking station, New York Times review of an iPad docking station. And then yourself. And that drawing of a character, yeah. like a very voluptuous Venus a lovely utility piece. figure holding the iPad. And so I thought, well, Google thinks it's a good idea, so I'm going to sculpt this. And so I, we can do things like with no investment digitally, right? Yeah, like we, can, we can create an idea prototype it digitally with, with no with no fundamental investment other than our time you right. know so I'm like well I'll test it and I did it and uh, it looked pretty good I'm like okay well I did a little bit of refinement and then I there was an, an exhibition like a juried exhibition coming up in London right I'm like well I'll submit this to to that so I got it prototyped I 3d printed a big one right full-sized yeah. and uh, Took some photos with the iPad, and the iPad barely fit. Right, this is a very crude prototype. I had to yeah, hammer, had hammer it in. Slash, had to hammer it in. I had to like start. sand the grip and Here's everything. Scott Eaton hammering away on his piece. The day before the yeah, submissions right. due, I get my People camera out, waiting. photographing in front of some curtains. Not the total pro job yeah. that, that you might expect. Um, submitted it, not accepted to the exhibition, okay. but I had the photos left, so I put them on my website. Like, well. You know, just a little, a little form, like a little tongue-in-cheek form. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you want information about Venus as she goes into production, you know, get in touch. And they had a little contact form. And uh, over six months or something, maybe 30 people got in touch, which means somebody does visit my website and right. they thought it was interesting. But 30 is not enough for me to put that from the very end of my project list to the front. Yeah, of course. You're like that's that's nothing. Like that's You're not that's not also. viable, right? right? That's not viable. But it was in my mind. It'd be like it'd be fun. But then I think it must have been three years ago. 
Um, one morning I woke up and had like 500 emails in my inbox. Whoa. People want, oh, inf information about Venus, please. I want more information, you know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, some big design blog had just picked it up and smacked it right in the front of their It's a really cool design, by the way. Which says, like, best iPad docking station ever. Yeah. And so, like, off the back of that, I thought, well, I should just try to make this. And, and so that was, that set that whole exploration in progress about prototyping products. Right. And, um, and there's a host of learning that's involved. Because I, it was exciting in that I, it was scary and exciting that I knew nothing. I, I, I spent, like, two months totally spinning my wheels trying to figure out how to get it made and right. how to produce it, how to mold it, how to... Because it's a few years ago, it's not, you know... Yeah, I mean, it's a long way st still, it's, still it's, it's easy to 3D print. I can certainly 3D print it, but we're talking about, you know, 1,500 people emailing right. and want, wanting one. You know? Yeah, so consumer you, product. This is yeah, you have, to, you, have to, you have to think about manufacturing. Right. And so that was a the whole Chinese learning... Question. That yeah. and amongst other things. I mean, there's right. just, there was just a lot. And, um, and so I negotiated that and navigated through that and and it was fun and so I've done a few other things. Yeah, they look great. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of these things but this brings me to another thing where you have the, n the next level uh, extension of that is your installation work which I am so enamored with uh, between friends. You know, high profile clients, uh, the Jeff Koons, Gaga piece, the Elton John uh, working with Lalique yep. for the AIDS Foundation. Talk yep. about how those types of projects uh, come come your way, and how you how you facilitate meeting the requirements for those big big profile projects. I mean, well, a lot I, of people are probably very nervous about that. Yeah, well, handle I mean, this expertly. I mean, I can't I can't say too much about the projects okay. um, themselves, but I mean, in general, like I have a little bit of a reputation for doing very high quality figurative work. Yeah, you know, and and. In you know a thing or two about a thing or two about figurative work. Yeah, it's fair I do. To say this I do. Way. I do. I have yeah. some experience in it, and um, and uh, a lot of times people get in touch for for that reason. Like they need they need quality, and they need. I mean, they're clients. They're they're right. they're clients who who need who need something, you know, and, and need the you know what I what I make, and and it's it's great to work on big projects. I mean, in the same way that it's great to work on a feature film or right. whatever. I mean, it's just a different industry, and so it's um, yeah, it's 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 fun. But I feel like there's a different layer of social awareness in some ways, though. When you're dealing with film, it's uh, sort of this mass media thing, and then there's a different type of person who is examining yeah, some of the I mean, pieces that we're talking about. I mean, about. I I'm not I'm, I'm not getting. integrated into the fine art world, right? There's right. there's differences between um, you know like VFX, obvious visual effects. Right. I mean, it, it's it's, that's maybe a good place to be. Like, a lot of my product design stuff is, is my take on, you know, is, is my tongue-in-cheek approach to I was going to say that. It seems like it's a, fun a little bit of a satire, yeah. a little bit of a satire on, on fine art and a little bit of a commentary. Um, but it's, uh, I enjoy doing them. I enjoy doing big projects. Um, they come through occasionally. Like, I have, you know, there's some that I'm working on right now that I, can't speak about, but they're looking good. I mean, cool. and, and generally they test for me. They're they're an exploration in in other things that I wouldn't do, like mm. whether it's materials or processes or you know scale. Um, so all those things are really interesting to me. And so as a byproduct of getting to do some interesting projects, I get experience in you know you know just more data points for you know. What it is, what it means to make sculpture and yeah, personal expansion for yeah. yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, so you exactly. would say that these things are more coming to you rather you rather than you seeking them out in some ways. For the most part. So yeah, your your reputation part. is preceding you, and I some people so. are saying, "Hey, Sometimes. let's go and see this yeah. guy about it." And yeah. this has taken a long time. Again, back to time, and yeah. true mastery. You know, there is uh, this idea that I think that you're you're going about it in the right way. You seem to be a, a man who is just certainly driven to continue to grow your funds of knowledge and to grow your own sort of awareness of things yeah. for the sake of just... For the sake of knowing more. Just for well, the for sake, the sake of, of interest, more. really. I and mean, interest, for the sake yeah. of interest. I mean, it's... Speak to that a little bit about that, that maturity that comes to well, us at certain ages. I mean, it's... it's um, so that's what the, the, the question is, right? Like, I, I'm interested in learning. Like, there's yeah. people who are interested in learning for the sake of learning. And, right. and I, that's, I, I do enjoy it for the sake of learning, but at the same time, there's applications. Like, for me, uh, like, you know, when, when you're learning something, any, any subject matter, right, at the beginning, the whole, the whole 
field, the whole spectrum is so daunting because you have no experience in it. Mm -hmm. As you gain more experience, then you, you start to think you know everything. That's the first stage. It's like, I don't know anything. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this for two years. Yeah, I now that. I know everything. Yeah. I got to that point, and I'm like, oh, I was really, this is like in 2000 and 2001, 2002 or something, where I thought, you know, like, I really know my anatomy and, mm -hmm. and stuff. And I would be, if I hadn't started teaching, I would have been comfortable with that level of knowledge. Right. And that would have been like a fraction, it would have been like 5% of what, I've learned over time just from having the, through the teaching process, right? And, and maybe this goes back to, you know, the old, you know, the old workshop master and student method where there's something that, that, that's acquired from, from giving and from teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, for me, I've, I've totally benefited from it, you know, and, and Myself as in, well. in the way of, of acquiring a deeper understanding of the subject matter, mm -hmm. right? Um, as opposed to just, working on just doing it, right? Doing it, but also teaching it. You, you learn, you know, it rounds out your knowledge. And so as you learn more in this, the, you know, whatever this, um, whatever this, you know, field corpus is that you're trying to, to study, you start to realize where all the holes are, right? You start to understand more acutely what you don't know. Right. And more so me, than what you do think you know. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's, like the stuff that I was showing and yeah. the body's emotion stuff, like that's for me, like going through every one of those sets, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I'll just be like, it's just like epiphany after epiphany, which is, is amazing because, you know, like that doesn't happen very frequently, but to have it happen frequently is, is really kind of special. And, and I'm like, you can tell I'm enthusiastic Absolutely. about it. Absolutely, I can it's, feel it. You can't feel it through the know, screen, like, but I can feel it. You can feel that it's guy. coming yeah. off of me. It's like, it's, it's just, Making it through the jacket, maybe. Right, just subsurface layer of the yeah, jacket. Yeah, it's know. getting through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that's it. The process. You eventually. So for me, like that's that's the key in interest is the is the things that I know I don't know, you know. And there's aha moments. You say, oh, yeah, well, look yeah, at yeah. how the light no, is that's it. And, and, you know, that. back to back to for me the thing that I'm talking I talk about learning anatomy and there were questions about that and and you know what's the most direct way and, and what I teach. What I, what I do teach my workshops or whatever is I teach essentially all the epiphany moments that I've had, right? Because I've struggled with it, right? right? Like every artist here who's trying, who's asking the questions, I've struggled with it. And because it doesn't just come naturally, it's, it's, it's knowledge, it doesn't just come naturally. But when you, when you have that epi the epiphany, like that's the, that's the important nugget that you can convey to somebody else. And if they're in the same situation, struggling with the same, concept then that it that will put them through that plateau that we were talking about yeah. you know like you can you can grind your wheels and struggle and struggle and not make progress but if somebody can just like give you here's here's think about it this way and you know, they'll be like whoa yeah, here's a tidbit to get you over yeah, that yeah. little hump i mean that, that's i think that's great you know that's that's really useful i like to, to think of it like a wagon on fire and i'm like sitting there trying to escape the flames but having enough wherewithal to sort of take a look at the things that are going on around me keep the flame burning and keep myself aware of what's right, happening okay. at the same time okay. it's really I'm going to stay out of that wagon <laughs> but I, I wanted to tell you Spider-Man doesn't smoke is one of my favorite drawings All right. so thanks ah, for sharing thanks, that man. with that's the cool. world I really that's appreciate cool. yeah, that yeah. one as, as a fan of comic book them. so on behalf of Scott Eaton and myself Louis Tucci we're going to ride back into the action here with the ZBrush Summit happening live from the Norman School on a bubble of champagne and kisses over to you Paul thanks very much alright thanks appreciate it